Hey guys and welcome to this video about Hypermesh. It's a basic, 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 basic functionality. It's really the basics. But um, yeah, I want to do it more fast paced, shorter. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me or the forum. Uh, yeah, I want to post uh, point, point this out right at the beginning. There's a super duper Altair forum. Oh, I cannot spell it right. But here we have an Altair forum, support forum. And there's a bunch of guys and girls um, reporting and answering your questions. It's really great and helped me a lot. So go check that out. Um, so that's it for that. And now let's prepare some very, very basic model. Uh, today's goal is to model a rather simple cantilever beam with a solid map mesh and I will let I will, sh I will shift the focus on the hyperview part. So in hyperview how can you measure as uh, elemental contour or something like this. Okay let's start. Um, we have nothing in here with a new model and I will just very quickly go into the view and uh, the buttons and where are the certain things. Now, if you don't have this uh, console right down here, don't worry, you could get it if you want it, but it's not always there. Uh, you have your menu bar, you have your bunch of buttons and you have your panel. Um, I will be using the panel quite a lot. It's, um, yeah, it's more convenient, some say but you can, could find almost any function from the panel in the menu bar. So yeah, you could, could go either way and I will show it um, either way as well. Um, yeah, the first thing I want to mention is at the beginning of a Hypermesh session, you have to choose your user profile. And as we are pre-processing something for OptiStruct, which is a solver, um, we're choosing the OptiStruct profile. You could use Radius or Arcusel or any other stuff here if you want to do a different model. But in our case, choose OptiStruct. If you don't have this panel anymore, right here. Okay, now let's start. We, have, we haven't any good geometry, right? So let's start by creating a geometry in Hypermesh. Yes, that's possible. Um, you don't have to import something from a CAD, but you can, sure. Um, but you can also create it right from Hypermesh. So the first thing I want to do here is I go to Geometry and the radio button on the right. And then I go to Solid because I want to make a solid box for a cantilever beam. Now I have this option and I will choose right this option. You have a base node and three other nodes. Um, those three nodes, yeah, it's, it's a bit complicated to, to, um, to tell that in words, but you have to see it. But just stick with me a, a minute. I will just click onto that to activate it. Base node is 000, zero, zero and I will choose um, 100 here, 100 there, and maybe 500 here. Now, if I uh, click the middle mouse button while pressing the control key, I will have the fit view um, command, which you could also do with I guess pressing F, oh, that's, <laughs> that's not so good. Um, just clicking in here and then pressing F is the same thing, but yeah, control and middle mouse button works as well. Now here I can't, can explain it a little bit better. To define a box, you could use um, three vectors. So you have your base node, and that's where you're starting from. And then you have one vector, second vector, third vector, which is this one, this one, and this one. Simple as that. Those three nodes here, those are the vectors and the base node is the base node. Pressing return and pressing create creates your this um, box. And pressing return once more brings you back into the main menu. Now, if you look on the left to your model browser, you will notice that you have a component, right? It creates a component, which is just a collector for things or geometry and for mesh right on the way because you created a box and this box has to go somewhere and if you have you haven't any component it creates one on the fly 
but you could also create one by yourself by pressing right mouse button in the model view model browser yeah and pressing create and then you have component right here okay now i want to do a material modeling and property so for the mesh later it's important that you have defined what material you want to use so um, for me it's steel in this case so i'm pressing right click here create material and i will name this steel and you see on the property editor on the bottom left that you automatically have selected a card image this card image is mat one which is a simple simple uh, simple most simple i don't know it's a simple material card in this case it's a isotropic uh, material linear and you have the values for steel right selected here so if you just once click in here and press enter you have selected the the according um, the value according to steel now i will choose um those three values which is the minimum one what you, which you want to define if you have you, you want to have mass information that's why we choose the row the density and you we will, you want to define the young's module and the poisson ratio you could also um, um, define the shear modulus um, instead of the Poisson ratio, but yeah, two of the three have to be defined. Okay, now the second thing I want to create is a property. This property will link the material law to the component. And I just call it solid because that's the card image we want to use. We don't have shell elements, no plates, no, yeah. You, you want to have a solid elements and solid the card image p solid is the right one to choose here yeah i want to continue and now you want to have a material right here just click it once again select steel press ok now you have linked your material to your property and the property must be linked to the component which is the thing we want to do right now we select the component on the model browser here and then you can see the property is nothing on here. And just simply click once here, second one, and select it and press OK. Now you have that. And now we can come to the meshing. Meshing is easy. Uh, if you have simple geometry like this, you could use solid map meshing. If you have a more complex geometry, solid map meshing is not always possible. And that's, um, yeah, you have to split and partition your geometry in order to use solid map. Um, the other way would be to use a tetra mesh. Tetra mesh has the advantage that it can mesh almost every arbitrary complicated geometry, but there's more elements for the same amount of volume and tetra mesh elements are not as accurate as the hexahedron elements. To mesh a geometry like this you could go to mesh create solid map mesh or you choose uh, 3d solid map that's those are the two ways you end up on this panel with the radio buttons on the left and you choose one volume in this case and you have this um, blue highlighted solid selector you could just select your solid and you see that that it's turning uh, white. If you want to deselect it, press the right mouse button. Left mouse, mouse button selects it. And now for the element size, I will pick something rather large because we want to have it um, run very fast. Okay, and I hit mesh. And we have those elements. Go return. And now we can check if the property matching has um, worked correctly. You see the, the color of the property is yellow. And if you choose here by prop, it should become yellow. Otherwise it would be gray. Yellow, perfect. Okay, change back to by part. All right, uh, the next thing we want to do is set up our load step. For our linear load step, we need to have two load collectors. One defining our single point constraints and one defining our load. First one, creating uh, just as the component and the material and property right clicking in the model browser selecting create and pressing load collector 
I name this SPC, hit enter, and now I can create my constraints. Constraints are um, set under analysis. If you select analysis on the right, you have the constraints right here. Or with the menu bar, you have, I guess it's BC for boundary conditions, create constraints. Okay, those are the two ways. Analyzes constraints or BCs create constraints. You end up on this panel, which you have nodes right here selected. You could select each node here. It's sort of a mess, but there's a pretty good functionality in here. It works for curved surfaces as well. Just select one node and select this yellow button and press by face. Now it will look on the face and select all the nodes on there. You could do that also if you want to push two sides, selecting one on, on each like this, pressing the yellow button and by face and now you have both sides selected. All right, um, deselecting with hitting the shift key or holding the shift key and right mouse button is deselecting, selecting is the left mouse button, yeah. All right, now I have this side selected and here are your degrees of freedom you want to hold. Hold means zero displacement or rotation. And in this case, I want just to fix everything. Well, it's solid elements, so you don't need four to six, but yeah, it's not, not a worry. Um, this is the first load collector. You can return here and create a second one. So right click, create load collector. In this case, we name it force. And for the force, it's the same page, analysis. And you have the forces right here. Or you have BCs create forces. Either way, you end up on this panel and you just select the node. In this case, I just select the middle one in here. And for example, let's, let's use the x-axis and 1200 newtons seems fair well i feel a bit lucky today let's make it 5000 okay what an ugly color um you could change the color right here so i tend to use red and blue it's yeah it's what you want um just change that a little bit. Okay, now you have your standard model. Blue, red is the way I like to model my um, my models or color my models. Um, all right, that's the load case, but we have not defined the load step right, right yet. Um, so under analysis, there's a, another button. It's called load step because SPC and forces, they don't know something from each other. So they have to be linked and this is what the load step does. So if you want to go to BC, oh no, uh, it's, I think it's tools or something like that. I don't know. I never used the, or setup. Yeah, setup create load steps, but never used the menu bar. I just go to analysis. There you have your three buttons in this case, forces, constraints, and load steps right on the same page. And that's a way, way, way faster for me. Oh, that's all selected right here. Just clear it for you. Um, you have your naming convention. You, you could name it uh, whatever you want. Uh, load step one would be a proper name. You have to type in here if there's something different selected, you'd see the, the buttons um, down below change. But in this case, um, we want to use a linear static load case, a load step. And for this reason, we want to address the SPC and the load, load collector. And we have to press here on the equal sign and select the proper one. And this will just insert the IDs in here, like here. Those are the two IDs, which go right here and press create. Uh, by the way, this is um, a rather important topic. When you create something or press a button right here, um, just look at the, at the bottom left corner if there's some error message, could be. If I press once more, you see subcase already exists in database. And it's a common mistake to press something like here and, and thinking, yeah, it, it will have worked, but it didn't. So by just looking each 
at each button press on the bottom left of your screen, you avoid this. And that's pretty handsome. Now with return, you get back and I think we're done. Um, we have a load step with material property, we have a mesh with a geometry. All right, I think we can start the analysis. Well, this will not be accurate, but it's, yeah, it's rather basic and yeah, for the purpose of this tutorial. So with analysis, you have your OptiStruct solver right here. If there's some different, um, I'm sorry, if there's a different button in here called solver, you're in the wrong user profile. Just change it to OptiStruct. Um, but if you're in the OptiStruct user profile, you could see OptiStruct in here, and then you can choose a path, whatever it, what you want to be. In this case, it's an analysis. You have an upper bound of megabytes you want to dedicate for this run. The more, the better. Um, and some options in here, if you want, um, you could address it, but it is rather small model, so you don't have the number of threads defined by this parameter. Just hit OptiStruct and override it if you have to. And then I think this is rather fast. So what, what you see here is your run. You see a maximum displacement of 0 0.12 and you have this result button. Yeah, this is the same button as this one, but not quite. If you press this one, a new Hyperview window will pop up. And in this one, it will put another window, but it's the same instance of Hyper HyperMesh. So if you close it right here, your model is gone. You have this indicated on the, on the top right with this blue button, so you can change between the windows, uh, but it's not an, a whole new instance of, of HyperMesh, but either way it's fine. Ah, what I want to uh, show you, you guys is um, the output file. It's also very important. Um, you, you could look into the output file and see some parameters with the optimization or the analysis in this case, how much uh, RAM um, it, it wants to take, how much stretch space, space um, the compliance, um, epsilons, and the mass, I guess, as well. Yeah, so if you have your density set, there's no 0, 0, 0, 0 here, but a uh, real value. Okay, now we come to the second part of this video. In this case, I want to show you how to um, look into your optimization or uh, analysis result, rather analysis in here. So we have a, a lot of different buttons in here. Let's start with the top one. Uh, we have the first thing you will notice um, is here the coordinate axis. So they work like in HyperMesh. You can choose the, the different um, layout options, different views. Uh, view manipulation works like in HyperMesh, just holding control down and with your left mouse button, you rotate. With your right mouse button, you pan. And what's there to say? I think that's about it. You, you cannot see elements in here. Why is that? You don't have selected it by default. Now on the bottom here, you have this little icon and now you can see the elements. It's much better to see it this way because now you get a feel how the model is, um, is uh, set from the element size. And now we want to see a displacement, for example, all the element stress. All those values are um, shown with the contour panel. This is the, the first very important uh, panel in here. It's the one with the, the rainbow color uh, right here, contour. Pressing that and just hitting apply brings you uh, the displacement. Like you have your uh, result type in here, so you can change it to stress and press apply again. And then you have your stress values. And yeah, so this is this is one thing. Um, then you, don't, you have another thing uh, right below the result type. Uh, it's more, yeah, the properties, how your result type should be displayed. In this case, the displayed, uh, displacement is um, the magnitude, but you could also use just, uh, for example, the X, star, uh, the X displacement. And then you can see that changed a little bit. Um, yeah, you could, uh, you could use uh, different analyzer systems, but we don't have that here. You can manipulate the legend. That's also very, very uh, important. Uh, for example, if you want to have a stress and want to be, oh, let's see, we have up to 20 MPAs of stress in here. 
um, let's say I want to color everything above 10 with red. So I press 10 here. I can see a different color. Selecting it here, you can see how it, the color changes. And also the legend changes in here. Um, then what, what else um, should we go into? Mm, if you want to reset your color, you have a result here with clear contour. Now it's gone and you have to apply it once more. Um, with the legend, you can edit the legend and just do a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, adjust the font size. If you want to have the min and max value, you, you could uh, deactivate it, for example. Um, then it will get a little bit uh, cleaner. Maybe change that to a fixed format, just one one um, decimal, and now you have a, a clean layout. Now, this is all sort of, um, yeah, your properties, what you want. Um, and ba the basic functionality in the contour panel is to just display a elemental contour, like the displays and all the stress. Um, you have also, uh, as a second thing, which is very important, the ISO panel. If you want to hide several elements, for example, the elements with which a stress with a stress value less than whatever, you could apply here, and then you have this slider in here, which displays or hides the elements below or above. You could choose the behavior right here, and I can see now it's. It's showing all the stress level uh, stress elements with below five, for example, or above. Now there's yeah, this gives you more um, more insight into your model, and uh, definitely want you want you to know that how to do this. Um, there's also you having um, you do you also have options for the um, for the geometry. If you want to have a feature so transparent view of your um, design space or your model completely because you're you're just hiding elements, so that that's rather cool. And you can also clear the ISO if you want to get rid of anything you have done here. Now let's uh, see. In uh, let's look into how you can animate your model. Like you want to see how it moves. Just play button in here, but seems to not do anything, right? Just really zoom into it. Ah, there you can see it. It's a little bit movement. Um, the um, velocity is just a slider below that but you cannot barely you cannot see that if you want to amplify the movement you can do that with the button right here and there you have a scale factor and just maybe 100 you can see the movement a little bit better and then you can see what this slider below does all right let's say you want to measure something there's two ways to do that. The first way is uh, the query panel. Query panel works like this. You click any element, let's stop the uh, moving behavior, any element like this, and then you see what is selected in here. So for example, the contour is in this case 20.4. You could select a bunch of other stuff in here and display that. And you can also select a bunch of uh, elements and then export that into an Excel sheet, for example. The other thing you could do is to measure it with the measure panel. This, this uh, icon right here. And with the measure, you just add a measure group. And now, for example, you can measure the distance between here and here. But maybe that's not what you want. You want the contour. So you select in here elemental contour. And now you can click on any element and you can see, right, what, um, yeah. In this case, what, uh, I think stress, yeah, what stress the element has. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. You can also make annotations if you want. For example, the model info is something like that, but you can also make a note and pick and place it anywhere you want. Um, that's, that's also possible. But I think that's that's really uh, it for the for the uh, basics. Yeah, there's a lot of different stuff: recording video and and um, yeah, making symmetry displays if you want you have a symmetry model, or mask elements if you want to mask uh, sort of elements. You can do that here. Um, but I think the basics is um, contour panel, iso panel, the amplifier for your movement. 
query panel and the measure panel. Yeah, and maybe one additional thing, the vector panel, you can display your vectors for example, the displacement as arrows. That's also pretty cool. And your tensor panel, if you want to do that, you cannot see it right here. You have to make it, um, yeah, what's, what's it, transparent. And you can see your tensors, um, the stress tensors in each element. Yeah, but, but that's more advanced stuff. Um, and I just wanted to cover the basics in here. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you back soon.